chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other at right angles then it is a rhombus So first of all I will draw a schematic diagram then we will proceed with the proof Suppose this is any quadrilateral that is given to us and let the sides be uh, the corners be marked as a b c and d we have been given diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other if ac is a diagonal and bd is the second diagonal we have been given that these two diagonals bisect each other so if they meet at a point p then bisection of this ac means that this length is equal to this length and the bisection of this diagonal bd means that this length is equal to this length we have also been given that the diagonals bisect each other at right angles this is another important thing that is this angle is 90 and also this angle is 90 we have to prove that such a quadrilateral is a rhombus now what is a rhombus a rhombus is any quadrilateral in which all the four sides are equal to each other i will define rhombus first define rhombus any quadrilateral any quadrilateral with all four sides all four sides equal this small definition it has more meaning in it let me show you that meaning he says quadrilateral with all four sides equal when we say all four sides equal there is implied thing that opposite sides are equal obviously if this length is equal to this equal to this equal to this then this length is equal to this and this length is equal to this so we can see that in a quadrilateral in which all the four sides are equal the each pair of opposite sides will be equal also which is a condition for a parallelogram we have proved it in our previous tutorials so this means that a rhombus because of this is also a parallelogram so rhombus is not only an ordinary quadrilateral it is a parallelogram we would better say rhombus is a parallelogram with adjacent sides equal this is another definition now when you say a quadrilateral with four sides equal this implies already that the figure is a parallelogram now we further know that all parallelograms they do not have adjacent sides equal so it is a special parallelogram in which all the four sides are equal to each other so this statement and this they are effectively one and the same let us now start with our proof now i assert that triangle dap is congruent to triangle dpc that is i am saying that this quadrilateral this triangle 
is congruent to to this triangle DAP and DPC. This assertion is correct because DP DP is equal to DP is common one thing and angle DPA is equal to angle DPC equal to 90 degrees that is given to us because the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and AP is equal to PC is also given because diagonals have been given to bisect each other so side angle and side by SAS criterion that is this side the included angle and the other side by the SAS criterion of congruency this triangle 1 is congruent to triangle 2 now when these two triangles are congruent the third pair of sides they should be equal to each other which implies which implies AD should be equal to DC this is the leftover side the 3 tick and the 3 tick we have now proved that if the diagonals are perpendicular and bisect then this side is equal to this side we can repeat the process for which two triangles we can repeat the process for this triangle and its neighbor on this side so this triangle 2 will be congruent to this triangle on similar lines why PC is common this is 90 perpendicular bisecting each other and this length is equal to this length bisection of this diagonal so again by side angle and side rule this triangle 2 is congruent to this triangle 3 and immediately it means that the third pair that is this DC and the BC I will place three ticks here they will be equal similarly similarly DC is equal to BC and extending the logic to third and this fourth triangle we will able to prove that BC is further equal to AB now AD is equal to DC which is equal to BC which is equal to AB which means all the four sides of this figure should be equal and therefore it is a rhombus this is how we can prove this theorem step by step we have offered the proof our end target was to prove that all the four sides are equal and that will make it into a rhombus and if all the four sides are equal then necessarily opposite sides are equal so it is a parallelogram also and a parallelogram in which all the four sides are equal that is the adjacent sides are equal so a parallelogram with adjacent sides equal or any quadrilateral with all four sides equal is called a rhombus let us move to our next proof now prove that the line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side let me draw the schematic first supposing this is a triangle ABC a triangle ABC line segment 
is joining the midpoints of two sides. Let P be the midpoint of this side AB. I'll tick it side by side so that I remember it. And Q is the midpoint of AC so these two segments are equal. A line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side. What we have to prove is that if I join PQ, then PQ will be parallel to BC. To prove PQ is parallel to BC. If you remember, I have proved the same thing exactly the same theorem by the concept of similarity in the chapter of similarity. But today we are going to prove that same theorem by using the concept of parallelograms. So that makes the things very interesting. It will help us explore our geometrical concepts even more. So how do we go about this? You will be able to see how we will make use of the parallelograms in proving this theorem? For this, what we do is, through this point C, draw a line parallel to the third side, this side AB. We'll draw it through C, draw a line parallel to AB and extend PQ, extend PQ to cut it in, cut it in D. We will extend PQ to cut this in D. Now we can make some observations. Since AB is parallel to this DC, this angle will be equal to this angle when P, PD is viewed as a transversal. So I'll mark it as point angle 1 and mark it as angle 2. So I will write PD is a transversal is a transversal for AB parallel to CD. So angle 1 is same as angle 2 alternate angles. This is one thing. The second thing is that AQ has already been given equal to QC. It is already given to us because Q is the midpoint of this AC. And next, this angle is equal to this angle. So I will write angle 3 and angle 4. Angle 3 is equal to angle 4. They are vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite. So by angle side and angle rule, the triangle APQ, triangle APQ, that is this triangle is congruent to, congruent to the triangle QCD. That is, it is congruent to this triangle. Two corresponding angles, this and this, and a side. So, by ASA rule, these two triangles are congruent. So, if they are congruent, the immediate conclusion is that side AP should be equal to the side CD. That is, this side should be equal to this side. But, but, AP is equal to BP, so BP is equal to CD, 
this is one thing this is equal to this so this side bp is effectively proved equal to cd and another thing is that bp is already parallel to cd so we can say that one pair of one pair bp and cd are equal and parallel and parallel so bpdc is a parallelogram that is this figure this figure is a parallelogram so what does this immediately prove it immediately proves which implies pq is parallel to bc pq is parallel to bc so this is what we wanted to prove that if you join the midpoints of two sides then this segment will be parallel to the base or the third side of the triangle let us move to our next question now